Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a candle haul and first impressions overview of holiday scents from Homeworks by Slacken & Co. So this is a collective haul. I've got a total of six scents here as well as a newly launched Homeworks candle hurricane stand, which I will do a sort of mini review on. So Homeworks had a today's special value at QVC in early July. There were eight cents of which I purchased four. And then a few weeks before that, they launched some early sort of Christmas in July fragrances for holiday. And I have two of those that I purchased. So this is just going to be sort of a haul and first impressions overview. The difference there between my typical Touch Fire Twice in-depth sniff or end up sniffing comparison reviews is I don't go quite as in depth. I don't go on and on about all the individual notes about these scents. I don't do a direct comparison to other candles, though I will plan on doing in-depth sniff reviews or in-depth sniff comparison reviews on at least a handful of these. So I'd love to hear from you if there are any that you really want to hear more about. There's a few that I definitely want to dig into with everybody, but if there's any specifically that you also want to hear about, please do let me know and I'll plan to do that in the coming weeks, coming months, somewhat. Uh, timely as because some of these scents are still available now and will be available potentially on QVC again if things come back in stock or on the homeworks.shop website, all very TBD, but anything is certainly possible as we've seen with homeworks and supply chain and all that as, as we are today. So before we get into the candle haul, I do want to do a quick overview of the first ever branded homeworks candle hurricane. So candle hurricanes are sort of dual purpose. So partially it's just for the aesthetics, the decor value, and then also it actually is to increase the performance of a candle. So the glass is going to help reduce drafts, and it's also going to just slightly insulate the vessel to help the wax get an even pool, just to have that little bit warmer to ensure you do get a full pool around, you don't have any canyoning or sort of inconsistent burns. So that's the purpose of Hurricanes. It literally is just a cylindrical piece of glass. It seems like a fairly well built. There, there are no significant imperfections. It's got a soft edge to it. I think some Hurricanes might have like a hard cut edge, but this is rounded edges, which is nice. Not super, super tall, which I also appreciate that it's not massive. And then the base is, it looks sort of, you know, wooden or ceramic, but it is resin. And there's just a slightly aged patina on here. This is, I would call it kind of a traditional like kitchen cabinet cream color with just a little bit of aging there to love you know i mean paint basically like rubbed on with just a little hint of a darker kind of taupe in there just to give it a little bit of that burnished aged cream look and then you have sort of your velveteen bottom homeworks harry slotkin's sort of signature that many of his figurals over the years include and then a lip here and then this is also just Part of the resin but it's just got a bit of a texture to it to put your candle right on top there it also comes in what they call a natural wood but it is not wood and to me it doesn't even look like a really particular wood grain more so just like a darker brown kind of paint rubbed across it with a bit of sort of like a mock grain placed onto it so i went with this one it feels feels like it was the most sort of clean and standard one and wanted to give it a shot a little bit expensive. Now, Hurricanes, I think, typically are expensive. This was almost $80. Transparently, I think that the true value of it is more like probably $50. But I understand we're in a time where things are always going to be a little bit more expensive than we think they probably should be. And I didn't need to get multiples. And I really wanted something for my kitchen island to really be the space. Also because having water around wax through candles is also not safe. So this does give you an extra level of protection there. And you can see in the thumbnail of the video here, I have burned a few in here and I've been really happy with the overall look and performance of the candles. TBD, how much big of a difference it'll make on candles that have performance issues. The ones I burned in it have not had issues on their own. So I will certainly update if I think that this makes a significant difference, though I've heard from others. Uh, I, I know that Mr. Kong's mom, Melanie, is a big proponent of Hurricanes, and she uses them very frequently uh, and sort of talks of the value that they bring to really increasing the performance and throw up candles. So do trust her on that, and I'm excited to give this one more of a shot. Now, getting into the six candles that we're going to do the quick first impressions overview today. First, we're going to start with a returning favorite. This is Vanilla Orchard Crisp. This was part of the launch just early Christmas in July before the big Today Special Value launch in QBC. It included tiramisu, it included a handful of scents, um, a balsam toddy, four or five scents, mostly new, a couple returning perhaps. This was returning and I never tried it before. The label was really pretty in the past. The labels on this mini collection are a little bit generic in the sense that they're just all different colors of the same sort of, again, fern slash pine slash 
could almost look like a snowflake, but I do think that they are just fern or or pine branches just kind of imprinted on there. So they're, they're not bad looking, but I do like something that's a little bit more specific to the mood that a candle's supposed to evoke or the vibe or, you know, a true photo of what it is, but that's fine. Notes on this one, farm sand cider, brown sugar, vanilla buttercream, and cinnamon stick. So the notes are super, super gourmand bakery, and I don't really get this as a true gourmand bakery because I, I wouldn't, mm, like brown sugar buttercream? I don't think so. To me, this is pretty, it's soft. It's got a decent throw. The actual intensity of the candle is not super intense, but the throw is solid, if that makes sense. And it's not my favorite scent. I probably wouldn't repurchase it, but it could be nice for layering. For me, it's kind of hard to find an identity. It comes off much more floral to me. Now, vanilla, orchard, crisp makes you think either crispy air or like a crisp, you know, baked good. And certainly with cider, brown sugar, buttercream, cinnamon stick, you would think more gourmand baked good. But I could see this being a sort of frozen orchard with some some sort of a gourmand, um, almost kind of body care vanilla thrown in there versus your edible vanilla. It's not bad. Um, I think some people would love it. It's just not really in my wheelhouse. I don't dislike it. I have, you know, in July, I have burned through a good two thirds of this candle. I'll probably save the other one for later on, but it's nice. It's, it's middle of the road for me. Next up, we'll bounce to the one other I bought from that same collection, and that is Balsam Toddy. I was excited for this one. First of all, anything with pine, whether you are fresh or you're gourmand, whatever, I'm here to give it a shot, as you'll see with my today's special value purchases. And toddy, you know, a hot toddy or sort of a butter rum, some sort of warm, typically a, you know, a liquor based tea drink really used, you know, back in the olden days of throw some bourbon and some lemon and some hot tea and it'll get rid of all your aches and ales. I don't know if that's exactly accurate or true, but toddy, that's sometimes what you'll see in uh, toddy blends is something along those lines. Notes on balsam toddy, fresh balsam sprigs, mulled apple cider, hot buttered toddy, and maple drizzle. So a little bit, uh, Straightforward. I almost think that smelling this, I think there's probably a lot more going on than just the obvious, okay, balsam and toddy. It's very straightforward in that sense, the notes. But when I first sniffed it, I was like, oh, I don't know. It's a little bit weird. And it is a little bit weird, but it is, now that I've burned it, I think about just once, early this afternoon actually, in my hurricane, really great performance, really solid, you know, six or seven, almost toward an eight throw. And it is a true gourmand pine, which for the folks who think pine is too heavy or it's too astringent or it's too whatever, this is not that whoosh outdoorsy sort of balsam. It's really softened. I'm not sure if it's apple cider specifically. I suppose it's, I suppose it could be, but I, do, I don't get maple in this. I would say, and I may end up doing the in-depth sniff review on this one, maybe even comparison, but for me, this one is more about the mood it evokes, and it's sort of this blend of the olden time Christmas. You know, certain scents are more nostalgic scents, and you don't necessarily know why. I mean, I wasn't alive in the 40s or 50s, but there's something about this that just, that just feels kind of old world versus maybe like a new world, um, you know, fresh balsam that is very outdoors, very now fragrance. This has that nostalgic, softer vibe to it, whether it's because of the gourmand with sort of the sweetness of either the toddy, you know, that buttered rum. It's not cloying, it's not overly sweet, but it certainly is gourmand. Probably a little bit of sheer musk in there, maybe I would say probably a good hit of tonka perhaps. But unlike other, you know, Bath and Body Works like sage, vanilla, vanilla balsam, to me it's different enough from that where it feels new and unique. And I actually may pick up another set of these because just a little bit of burn I did today makes me really think when you're looking for those cold November, December days where you want that nostalgic scent versus a wake me up scent, this is really very pretty. So I'm actually loving that more uh, as I've sniffed it over time. Now we get into 
two newbies and two returning. I will start with one of the returning, and that is Partridge in a Pear Tree. I'm a fan of these labels. The photorealistic labels generally work for me, especially when they are seasonal and holiday. It's just imagine this, you know, in the hurricane or near twinkling lights on a little decor scene on a hut or something like that. This would fit right in. And of course, with these sort of gold metallic lids, which I think may be like a mixture of plastic and metal, because they're certainly not as heavy as the traditional homeworks lids, but they do feel like they're not just plastic because you can very easily snuff out your candles with them. Partridge in a Pear Tree is a returning scent. This was a trio, Partridge in a Pear Tree, Over the River and Through the Woods, All Through the House, part of the 2018 Holiday Celebrations Collection. I had purchased only Over the River and Through the Woods originally, which I did like. Came back as Spice Balls from last year. Really recommend that. I enjoyed that a lot. May review that later this year. And then I had smelled, my mother actually had purchased this one, and I smelled it for the first time a few months back actually when I visited, and I really, really liked the scent. It was a pear, but it wasn't an autumnal pear. It felt more like a holiday pear and kind of baked and drizzly and very unique and strong. Notes in this one. Poached pears, tonka bean, red berries, and heliotrope. So really sort of an elevated blend there. Oh, and I do love it. I haven't burned it yet, even the original 2018 one, but I'm tempted because this could work, certainly this could work for autumn. This would be a beautiful November scent. I think I might wanna do an in-depth sniff review on this because a lot going on. I will say this seems a little bit lighter than the 2018 version, though I know that that one was not a great performer for a lot of folks. So as long as the performance is good in this, this definitely smells like it'll be strong enough. It's not particularly light. And it's just a real baked, or as I say, poached pear. There's probably a little bit of booze in there. So not really sure what. Could just be like Grand Marnier on top or just a little bit of cognac. There's red berries. I almost get a bit of dried fruit as well, either like golden raisins or something in like a, a soupy glaze. The heliotrope adds a freshness to it. It's just, ooh, that is a really great uh, kind of poached pear scent without being baked good in the sense of it's not your crumble, crisp dough scent. There's no streusel, probably little to no cinnamon, spice, that kind of thing. So it really leans a cleaner, fruitier gourmand, which is just so pretty any time of the year, but especially in the holiday season. Then we get into, I'll save my best, my favorite of all time for last. Uh, I'm sure you know what it is. But we'll get into two newbies from the eight that came out. Um, one of which I'm enjoying. I've not burned either of them yet. And the other I am not a fan of. And there's a quality control issue that I'll get into. But first, let's go with Frosted White Pine, another really pretty label, this time with, you know, the pine frosted with snow and your little glistening lights on there. Notes on this one, white pine, fresh spruce, sparkling bergamot, and white patchouli. So sort of traditional pines with your, you know, the white pine, the spruce, which sometimes is gonna lean a little bit musky for some folks, but then adding in the bergamot, which is, it, it's not unheard of in a holiday scent, certainly, or a, a pine or evergreen scent, but it's not super, super common. And then white patchouli, also interesting to bring a little bit of earthiness to it. It's, it, it's certainly spruce. It, you've got sort of that that sharp edge to it that spruce often brings. It's not your soft, it's not your warm, it's not your, in my opinion, comforting. It is an astringent, but without the whoosh of balsam, it's more almost dank, earthy, and kind of resinous is what spruce brings for me. And matching that with patchouli, that's gonna be a little bit heavy. It's certainly, this is an earthy, dirty pine. I, I do like it. I wouldn't mind if it was also had a little bit more of a balance of a, a balsam, some sort of fur in there, but for what it is, it's nice, it's unique. I would also actually really love to see maybe an herbal in here, just like a little bit of a rosemary to brighten it a bit, but this is nice. It is strong, musky. I'm excited to see what that looks like or what that smells like burning. It's It could be very, very nice once it's warming up, especially, so. Definitely a, a mix between, it's not the old world pine, it's not quite the refreshing, cooling outdoor pine, somewhere in the middle, but but also unique in the, the earthiness of it. Then we'll go to the one that I don't like, though I've not burned it, so not giving a full fair chance, but I'll get into that here as well. That is Fresh Snowfall. I was intrigued by the name, of course, really pretty label. I mean, I could have eight different pines with eight different <laughs> images, and as long as they're the image is evoking what the notes are, what the scent is, I'm down. Give me all the pines you've got, all the trees you've got. 
Fresh Snowfall sounded interesting because notes frosted mint, not sure which kind, I'm assuming probably a peppermint if it's frosted, crisp winter air, that could mean a lot of things, that could almost lean sort of floral and, or citrusy, fresh eucalyptus, all right, we're getting a little herbal, floral, aromatherapeutic, and holly berries. Okay, there's some scents that have similar notes. I would like a juniper in here based on the notes, but I was thinking, could this be similar to the Snow Day Candle, which was a one and done back in 10 years ago at, at Bath & Butter's at Slacken & Co. Could this be sort of the Slacken & Co. Holly Wreath from back in the day, which was some berries and some mint and eucalyptus slash juniper. I was hopeful that it could be something like that. The issues I have with this candle, first up, two things. First of all, the quality control on this is just unacceptable. Now, I'm someone who buys a ton of candles, so getting sort of one bad one in, the, in a batch when they're making 70,000 candles, statistically, it's going to happen. But if I were new to, to Homeworks and I had just you know saved enough money to buy a single set and I bought a set and this was what I got, it would be a big bummer. And Granted, QVC has a, a good return policy. If there's something defective, you know, you can return it and you know you won't pay the shipping, but it still is not a good customer experience. And this is something where at the factory, it's not like, oh, this was something weird that you didn't notice until it burned. Whoever was doing QC at the factory in Vietnam should have seen this, called this out and not allowed it to go into a box. And I say that not just the aesthetic of, we've seen sometimes the candle wrap arounds, which is the shrink wrap, sit a little high sometimes versus here, that is right down to that first kind of, you know, glass lip there. This sometimes are a bit higher and it's usually fine. This is so high that it wraps around the top edge, if you can see there. Like, you can, it is up, over, and almost inside. So that at that point, when there's loose plastic here, like, that's that's a fire hazard. That, that could easily catch because there's no glass between the flame and the plastic, it really could catch there. Would it? Probably not. Could it? Well, there's a higher risk than if it weren't like this. So aside from visually it not looking great, the poor QC and the potential risk was enough that I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to return these and exchange it for a different set. Also just so they can be aware of the issue. And then sniffing it, I really don't like this scent. I don't often, if, if you watch my channel for two days or 10 years, it's rare that I actively dislike a scent. I wouldn't want to say that for certain without actually burning it. And oftentimes your nose your, evolves or based on mood or day or place, you might not really love something and then like turn around and say, oh, you know what? Now I can see why this is a great scent or a good scent. This is one I don't know if that would happen. I don't think it would. It's better today than it was when I got it yesterday. All that, but what I was saying was, I'm happily returning this and just gonna get a refund on it versus a new one because I also don't like the scent. I wouldn't return it if I just didn't like the scent because I'd have to pay the return shipping and lose out and it's like, okay, I'd rather just gift it or get over it and burn it to have it in my collection. But because there is the quality control issue where it's essentially defective, I'm fine returning it entirely. Now, to me this, This reads, I don't get much of the mint, like a, a weird chewing gum. Mint in wax can sometimes seem, you know, toothpaste or chewing gum. I don't think I've almost ever said that except maybe one or two mint candles that I've reviewed. But there's something like artificial in the mint as if it's like sugar-free mint gum. And alongside that, I don't get the berries. I really would love to see like a redness in there. The fresh eucalyptus, there's some astringency, but it's not a fresh, bright eucalyptus. If anything, it's supremely powdery and dirty. Overall, the scent is dirty to me. Not fresh snowfall, you think a clean, refreshing scent. There's something dank and earthy in this. I don't know, maybe it's whatever's in the winter air accord. There can be a lot of things that could make up an air accord, but it's almost like the tree bark. Like dirty tree bark, nothing bright. Again, you've got the cooling, the mint is almost like more of a camphor, like a soft vix where there's not really a scent to it that is pleasing. It's more just the feeling of the coolness. So they've got the, you know, the, the frosted mint, they've got the coolness going, but it doesn't have the scent behind it. It's more just the feeling of coolness. No real pines in here actually, which is kind of 
fine, but with the label, I was thinking, okay, this is gonna be outdoor scent, snowfall, but snow on trees. I suppose that's the frosted white pine more so, but again, this is just your mint air, eucalyptus and holly berries. But it's just, it doesn't work for me. It's a little bit soapy, so I imagine there might be some sort of odd floral or musk in there, almost an amber. I could see an amber maybe in the base of this with something else really almost kind of a warm, heavy base note, which also doesn't really work for me with Snowfall unless it were a resinous cedar or some, you know, something from a, just like a sap, like a snowed in candle from back in the day. So it just doesn't work for me. I, it's what I like, it, it does make me feel good when I sniff it. Uh, so based on the quality control, I will be returning this one. I would love to hear opposing thoughts because someone I'm sure is going to love it and is going to smell something different and say that I'm crazy for smelling what I smelled, but it just doesn't work for me. And then finally, this will refresh my nose. Mistletoe Magic, AKA Winter Garland. I will be doing an in-depth sniff comparison celebration video on this candle sometime soon. It is my number one all time favorite holiday candle. It has been for 11 years at this point, which I'll give some details on that in that video. The notes on this, black currant, pine needles, fir balsam, pomelo. That's a quarter, a third of the notes in this. There's also blood orange, champagne, a bit of a cranberry. There's so much beyond what you see here. And the pomelo especially, if you're gonna put four notes, that wouldn't be one of the four. It's maybe one of 12. So if anyone was turned off by that, I would say don't be turned off by that, give this a chance. Great label, very traditional mistletoe label there and with a pretty red wax and sniffing this. Oh my God. This is so beautiful. It is the perfect holiday scent. Could be Christmas, could be a non-denominational just holiday merriment. It is a bit of citrus, kind of like your pomanders, but doesn't lean overly spiced like that. It has a heavy hit of the pine, but not too much. It's got other fruit in there with your black currant, with a bit of the blood orange, which is gonna be kind of bitter, almost like a bergamot, but more of a blood orange, that deep. A champagne, which is gonna be a little bit effervescent, gonna be, again, another form of almost booziness, but not your trim the tree booziness, because it's not like a heavy, heavy boozy, it's just a little bit of a sparkling booziness. It's celebratory. And at the same time, it is old world. There's something in this that is very, very nostalgic, similar to how I get that nostalgic feeling from the balsam toddy. This is at once current and nostalgic. I won't go on and on because I don't wanna take the entire video for this. I'll be doing a 20 minute video on just this and the history of it and, and why I love it. But if it's still available, if it comes to homeworks.shop, if it's sold on QVC, I highly recommend it. I got a couple sets myself. It hasn't been around for a couple of years and I was really, really happy to see that Harry brought it back. It is just the perfect holiday Christmas candle for me. And I, obviously, it is like my top, top, top recommendation. That is my first impressions haul and, you know, bit of review. <laughs> Let me know which of these you've purchased, which ones you've smelled, what you like, what you don't like, agree, disagree, would love to hear your thoughts on it. And until next time, take care.